Hello everybody, it's been a long time since I did an update on the layout, but I'm going to walk you through some stuff that I've been working on, and then I'm also going to walk you through something in progress here today. So, uh, it's Jan early Jan, well, late January now, and I've been adjusting the track layout as the winter has been going on based on the layout settling, for lack of a better term. term. Um, I've discovered that I soldered all the rail joiners together and I'm going to need to cut some gaps because there's a couple spots throughout the layout, oh, about every every couple modules or so that the track uh, came up from the cork and um, I had to relay it so uh, had to do that here, I had to do that over here in this corner, I had to do it on some of the straight sections here through New Lisbon. Um, and then on the other side of the layout. I figured I was going to have to do that, which is why the layout is still sitting here with no paint on the rails and no scenery started. I wanted to let it sit for one winter and see what happened. So now I know and now I'm going to adjust. So I bought a new roto tool because uh, my other one, the bearings died on it. <clears throat> so I can cut some gaps, um, cut some track out. Uh, relay it in with uh, insulated rail joiners uh, periodically. Um, I have cut a couple gaps, so like here you can see there's a, just a gap cut, but I'm gonna put a small piece of track section in there with insulated rail joiners on one end so it keeps it a little more straight and those clear insulated rail joiners, they'll blend in when I get them painted so it won't be a problem. Uh, other things that I did, I, uh, over here in Camp Douglas, I, uh, I added a f little, about a foot of rail here to this interchange track. I found that when I was switching in here, I didn't have really enough room. Um, if there was traffic in here at the feed depot to get a locomotive in there and another car to drop on the interchange track to that would go over to the Omaha Road. So I this was an easy little project. I just put some put some more uh, roadbed down and added another piece of track. So that uh, went as far as I could before I ran a module, but that should be plenty of room now. Uh, if you can see that, that's that's going to work out real good. So that's kind of what I've been doing on the layout. So the next project we're going to talk about here today is powering it. I use Digitrax. Um, I invested in a new command station when I built the layout. It's a DCS 240 plus. Uh, I have it running off of my old 5 amp PS515 uh, power supply. And then I have it going into a PM74 here. Um, the blue and the yellow wires are one main, and the red and the black wires are the other main on the layout, and they're electrically isolated, any crossovers. So the original thought was that this was going to be enough. But this layout's twice as big as my old layout. And I discovered last week when I was running four trains around, all of a sudden the system freaked out on me. Um, and it kind of shut itself down. So after talking to some buddies of mine, I think I've discovered that, well, I need a booster. So <laughs> um, there's not enough power going to the track to, with, with the four trains that were running, which was like 14 engines, because I had two passenger trains of multiple units running on each main line, plus all the locomotives sitting in the staging yard and the locomotives sitting in the uh, staging facility, uh, it was just drawing too much juice. So... I have a solution. Actually, it's a multiple solution. So I ended up, <clears throat> I got a booster, a DB220. And instead of using that 5 amp power supply, I invested in the big guy from Digitrax. It's a PS212E. Uh, this guy, it's got, it's, it's got a dedicated power switch on it and outputs and a nice cooling fan in the back. And then I'm going to run this at 5 amps, so this Y terminal thing here that they send you with it, I can plug into the, into the um, 
power supply and then run both the command station and the booster off of this and there's um there's circuit protectors here that'll that'll be good for that so um i'm going to install this and once i get it in i'm going to keep going with the video and show you what what it looks like so stay tuned all right so i've got my booster hooked up here with a local nut to my brain my uh, command station and I got my Y connector hooked up for my power. But the important thing they want to make sure you do with this, if you haven't done this before, the red goes to the positive, the black goes to the negative. The polarity does make a difference on this, apparently. I haven't tried it. <laughs> I don't want to tempt fate and try it without doing it. But that's what the uh, manual says. So we're going to go with what the manual says. So then the Y connector comes off the two power buses, uh, uh, two power jacks on the front of the booster in the, in the uh, command station into the power supply which is now plugged into my surge projector um, haven't powered it up yet uh, I got it set to N I got everything set the way it's supposed to be here so I'll be back in a moment after I check it make sure it works so right now since I'm gonna run each main uh, one main off of the command station and the other main off of the booster I've taken my PM74 and I've disconnected it. Eventually I may get another one of these and break each main into power districts, but right now we're just going to run them as singles. I mean, as a single power district running off of one off of a booster and one off of the command station. So right now the PM74 is uh, superfluous, so I've disconnected it, taken all the power leads off. So they're sitting up here right now. So next thing I need to do is take those and connect them to my power leads that are going into one end of the booster and one of the command station so I'm gonna go get some wire nuts and we're gonna do that next for now for temporary I'll eventually solder them all together but right now we're gonna use some wire nuts and get this working so stay tuned all right so I've got everything hooked up I got the power on the lights are looking the way they should I have the track status on um, I've disconnected the leads to the one main line because we're going to do a test here and make sure they're right. So right now my yellow and blue, which is the westbound main, is the one that has power. Okay, so we're using this Santa Fe F3 here for testing even though it's Milwaukee Road. So notice it's got power, so that's good. Track status is on got it and it runs so here's my crossover here and when I run it here theoretically when it hits that insulated rail gap it's gonna stop because there's no power on the other line victory it worked that's what it's supposed to do so I'll be back in a second I'm gonna hook those wires back up and we're gonna see what happens when we go across the gap and see if the other booster kicks in Okay, so I hooked my power, track power back up. Nothing beeped or anything. So theoretically it should work. Power's on, track status is on. So now's the test. We'll see if we run over this crossover. And we still have power. We know the track it's on has power. When it hits that crossover, see if it's still, look at that. And I still got control of the locomotive which means the local nut's still working on between the command station and the booster. So, that worked the way it was supposed to. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> so, anyways, that's our project for today. Um, so, yeah, I'd say that's a success. So, now the next thing I'm going to do is... As I said, we're going to go around and I'm going to cut gaps, I think, um, just again to alleviate some of the stress on the layout. And I may or may not break each main line into power districts. I haven't decided yet, but that's what the, uh, if anything, I'll break each line into four power districts because that's what I can do with the PM74, which would mean I would need to get a second one of these for the other main line. The other issue here is um, so right now the entire staging yard and the engine facility here 
um, is on running off of the one booster. I may, like I say, may wire this section if it's just going to have locomotives sitting in it separately into a different power district. And I run it off a, either, I have an old command station that maybe I could, I could, um, turn some of the CVs in it, not CVs, but you can set up an old command station to run as a booster and that's what I may do over here just to have power in the staging yard here. So I may do that. That's what we do in the Modutrack layout. Each main is a is a booster, a separate booster, and then the staging yard, New Lisbon yard, and um, Wausau yard are another booster. But long story short, this should alleviate my power problems I was having so I'm gonna test this out a little bit not right now but it's been a long enough video so you can see I'm not even right now because there's nothing really running that needle is just off zero because it's just reading whatever the locomotives that are sitting there nobody's drawn any power yet so this is a success I'm really happy with this so I'm kind of a newbie at Digitrack stuff so but I will go around and clean up all this wiring too because it's kind of a rat's nest under here but for right now it's working we're gonna test it make sure everything's good um, the other thing that I think I may need to do right now I just have very preliminary feeders dropped not very often uh, I need to go back around and do that because I think that might have been my other problem I may not have enough feeders running based on the number of locomotives that I have out here. So, anyways, that'll be a next project coming up. I'm going to go around and drop feeders about every three feet. Um, and I think that's going to fix my problem. Then I won't have any problem running as many locomotives as I want. So, hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you having the same problems, I hope this helped you out a little bit. So, take care and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.